The NFL isn't just a bunch of tough guys running into each other. Oh no, it's one of the most intricate and detail-oriented games of strategy on the planet. Can you believe it? Peyton Manning runs it in for the touchdown. And these are 200 IQ NFL moments. And in the toss, a the end zone for the touchdown. And chase to the end zone. All oh, two diving attempts, and they never... Let's kick things off in Super Bowl 44, the New Orleans Saints were playing against the Indianapolis Colts. And the Colts had a potent offense led by legendary quarterback Peyton Manning. So coming out of halftime, Saints head coach Sean Payton wanted to try to steal a possession from the Colts offense. He thought long and hard and decided to attempt a risky onside kick to start the half. In his mind, the reward of taking away a possession far outweighed the risk of giving Manning and the Colts good field possession. Manning was so talented that he was likely to get his team up the field anyway. And guess what? The onside kick proved successful. The Saints took possession of the football and went on to win the Super Bowl. Thomas Forstead steps into the football and it's an onside kick. And it's going to be covered up by... Understanding game situations is so critical. In some cases, it can shift the entire outcome of a game for better or for worse. And here is a running back that knew exactly what his team needed. Brian Westbrook was an elite running back during his prime, and against the Cowboys, he proved that he was also one of the smartest players in the league. Up by four points with just over two minutes left, Westbrook busted out a big time run and was poised to score a touchdown. However, instead of entering the end zone, he crouched down and kneeled at the Cowboys' one yard line. After a brief moment of what the hell are you doing, fans quickly realized that his unselfish decision effectively gave the Eagles the opportunity to take three knees in a row and end the game. Eagles fans were thrilled, but Westbrook's fantasy football owners were devastated. We'll watch Westbrook take a seat at the one. Speaking of elite, up next is a wide receiver who continued to find new ways to wow us. In 2003, the Vikings were up against the Denver Broncos. Nearing halftime, the Vikes had enough time remaining on the clock for one last attempt at a touchdown. Their quarterback, Dante Culpepper, launched the ball as far as he could, but it was clearly falling well short of the end zone. Randy Moss understood the situation well. First, he made a great catch in coverage to secure the football. But then, as he was getting tackled, he flipped the ball over to Mo Williams for a touchdown. Left. Moss caught it at the 11, but now he oh, look it. This to oh, Mo Williams. Maybe the Broncos should have been aware of Mo Williams. I mean, what other choice did Moss have at that point? But here is a play the Cowboys could have never seen coming. When the Steelers were playing the Cowboys, Ben Roethlisberger was managing both his offense and the clock simultaneously. And the Cowboys were very aware of the situation. After securing a first down, it seemed like Big Ben was rushing his group to the line in order to spike the ball and stop the clock. But nope, Roethlisberger faked the spike and completely fooled the Cowboys. Then he threw a touchdown pass to his star wide receiver Antonio Brown. Gotcha! Here's a fake spike, Brown, touchdown! It's one thing to have talent, but how many of these guys have ever actually read the rule book? Well, Randall Cobb seems like he did. In 2012, the Titans couldn't catch a break against the Green Bay Packers. They were already getting their lunch handed to them when their kicker Rob Baronis placed a beautiful kick that rested in the corner of the field right on the Packers' four-yard line. Randall Cobb, the Packers' returner, seemingly had nowhere to go, but instead of attempting to return the ball back or conceding to the Titans, he made an extremely high IQ play. Cobb stepped out of bounds with one of his feet before picking up the football. Therefore, the ruling was that the kickoff did not land in the field of play. The Titans were tagged with an illegal procedure penalty and the Packers got to start their drive on their own 40-yard line. When it was all said and done, the Packers slaughtered the Titans by a score of 55-7. to That's a brilliant play by Cobb. By Clearly, the Packers are teaching this stuff at practice because four years later, an almost identical play occurred. Only this time, it was Ty Montgomery who sprawled himself across the field with his feet out of bounds before picking up the ball off of the three-yard line. Once again, the Packers were rewarded with field position at their own 40-yard line. 
and we were given another reminder of why the Packers so regularly dominate the NFC North division. These guys are clearly one step ahead of the pack. And if you want to get a step ahead, you better like this video and subscribe to my channel. Cause no one keeps you as informed as Dropkick. I mean, besides NFL coaches. Cause boy, do they ever have their guys making some heads up plays out there. If you love defensive chemistry, then this play by the Cardinals will be right up your alley. First, linebacker Sam Acho forced a fumble. But with the ball rolling out of bounds, Greg Toller made a brilliant play by saving the ball and tossing it back to his defensive teammate, Rashad Johnson, who officially got credit for the fumble recovery. What a team effort. You won't see heads up football much better than that. Speaking of defensive chemistry, a lot of people think that players play cornerback when they don't have the skills to play wide receiver. But a couple of Patriots defenders proved that philosophy a myth. Devin McCourty was attempting to intercept the football while falling out of bounds. But when he noticed his teammates Marquise Cole nearby, he volleyed the ball up to him for an easy interception. Clearly these guys aren't one trick ponies. Pressure tip and it's intercepted! The Patriots defense might have some offensive skills, but check out this wide receiver who proves that he's more than a soft set of hands. Julio Jones is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, but against the Cowboys, he proved that he might have the skills to play other positions as well. His quarterback, Matt Ryan, launched a ball over his head, and Jones realized quickly he had no chance of catching it. But instead of giving up on the play, he flipped a switch and immediately turned himself into a defender, which proved to be brilliant because Cowboys safety Jeff Heath most definitely would have picked off the ball. But Julio Jones came in and clobbered him, unleashing his inner Ed Reed. Go, looking for Julio Jones, and it's intercepted. Oh, what a hit by Jones! Julio Jones never ceases to amaze us. What a player! But you know which guys get overlooked? Special teams players. But these guys are also way more talented than you could ever imagine. The Dolphins lined up for fourth and goal on the one yard line in an incredibly unusual formation. After bringing out their special teams unit for a field goal attempt, they split everyone on their team out wide. All that was left was the snapper and holder Matt Hawk and shotgun. As soon as Hawk got the ball in his hands, he took off like he was going to try to run in the touchdown. But it was all a trick. As soon as the Eagles defenders began chasing him down, he flipped a cute little shovel pass to who else but kicker Jason Sanders for a touchdown. Never mind high IQ plays, could you imagine the euphoria of Jason Sanders' fantasy owners across the nation? Priceless! But the Eagles haven't only been on the wrong end of deception, they've been known to keep a few little tricks up their sleeves as well. Facing a critical fourth and goal with 38 seconds left in the first half of the Super Bowl, the Eagles could have easily punched through a routine field goal. But instead, they orchestrated one of the most epic trick plays we've ever seen. Quarterback Nick Foles moved mysteriously to the right side instead of taking the snap under center. At this point, the opposing Patriots already had their feathers ruffled up. Then, a direct snap went to running back Corey Clement, who tossed the ball to tight end Trey Burton. Burton, at the center of attention, then executed a perfect pass to Foles, who stood alone in the end zone, resulting in a touchdown. This play right here just might stand alone as the most iconic in Philadelphia Eagles history. And it's Trey Burton who throws caught, Foles, touchdown. And up next is a play that was drawn up so perfectly that even Trubisky was able to get in the end zone. Mitch Trubisky is most famous for being the quarterback that the Bears selected over Patrick Mahomes. But his greatest moment might have come immediately after his first career touchdown pass. Up against the Vikings, the Bears opted to attempt a two-point conversion, and the play call was absolutely brilliant. Trubisky took the snap, pitched it back, and then after a little tic-tac-toe action, eventually had the ball pitched back to him. The Vikings were danced right out of their underpants, and Trubisky was able to walk right in for a successful two points. In motion, the pass is caught for the two-point conversion. Then, just when you think you've seen it all, the Eagles came up with a completely innovative kick return trick play. They deployed wide receiver Riley Cooper as a hider in the end zone. That's right, he laid in his own end zone like he was playing a game of hide and go seek. And after his teammate Brandon Boykin caught the kickoff, Cooper bounced up and joined the play. Boykin tossed a pass across the field to Cooper who was all alone and ran it all the way back for a touchdown. Unfortunately, it was ruled that Boykin's throw to Cooper was a forward lateral, so the play got called back. 
but that doesn't take away from the Eagles brilliant play call. Hiding is one thing, but this next one just might deserve an Academy Award. The Seahawks were in a rivalry game against the Rams when their punter John Ryan launched a punt downfield. Stedman Bailey, a gunner for the Rams, was disguised as a blocker, but really he was the one who would be fielding the punt. Tavon Austin, the team's typical return man, was actually deployed as a decoy on the play as well as every other player on the Rams. Austin went to where the ball wasn't going to go, and all his teammates followed him and set up as if the ball was going to drop in his hands. The Seahawks coverage team all sprinted after Austin, thinking the ball was going right to him. But Stedman Bailey caught the ball and had no one to beat but John Ryan, who watched his entire team get duped before his very eyes. Bailey ended up scoring an easy touchdown in one of the cheekiest trick plays in league history. Poor John Ryan stood no chance on that one. And up next, the Bengals didn't stand a chance either. In this play here, the Ravens literally held on for a 1914 victory against the Bengals by understanding a weird little loophole in the rulebook. Turns out that a game can't end on a defensive penalty. It can, however, end on an offensive penalty. In fact, it can end on 10 offensive penalties simultaneously. With 11 seconds remaining on the clock, the Ravens snapped the ball to their punter Sam Cook. Cook ran all the way back into his own end zone, dancing around to kill the clock. Meanwhile, every single Ravens player held on the Bengals to prevent them from getting up the field. All the refs threw their flags on the field, and if they had laundry bags filled with flags, they would have likely been dumped on the field. But due to the rule explained, Cook was able to finish the game by running out of the end zone for a safety with no time remaining. The result of the play is a safety. That two points will count, and by rule, there is no extension, so the game is over. John Harbaugh was waiting for the chance to use his trusty old hold your horses play. And Dwayne Harris had been waiting his whole career to use this next tactic before he finally got his chance. The Denver Broncos seemed to put themselves in great position with a punt. Right before rolling into the end zone, a Broncos coverage player named Isaac Yadam managed to catch up to the ball and tap it in play before the ball crossed the goal line. At that point, the Broncos seemed to think the play was done or that they would have the opportunity to leisurely capture the football, forcing the Raiders to start their drive back at their own one yard line. But Dwayne Harris had other plans. He may have been the only player on the field that knew that the play was still alive. He came in, swooped up the football, and took it all the way back to the house for a miraculous 99-yard punt return touchdown. What a smart move by Harris as he gets free! Harris sure had some blazing speed, but up next is proof that you don't need speed to score, as long as you are a master of deception. The Denver Broncos and Dallas Cowboys found themselves in a shootout led by two of the best gunslingers in the league, Peyton Manning and Tony Romo. And the Broncos had the ball at the one yard line on third down. With so many talented players at their disposal, the last thing that the Cowboys expected was for Peyton Manning to run the ball in himself. I mean, at age 37, he was far from a sprinter, but Manning and the Broncos brilliantly used that logic to their advantage. They ran a flawless bootleg play action that left Peyton Manning all alone to scamper into the end zone for a score. And who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Can you believe it? Peyton Manning runs it in for the touchdown. Being a defensive coordinator would be a nightmare, because NFL offenses are full of surprises. Don Terry Poe has got to be one of the most interesting players in the league. The guy is a massive 350-pound defensive lineman who gets brought into jumbo packages at the goal line before Chiefs clearly know how to utilize their weapons. And Poe is the world's most biggest Swiss Army knife. Bravo. I guess that's why the Chiefs keep winning Super Bowls, but Don Terry Poe isn't their only sneaky playmaker. Patrick Mahomes gets a lot of credit for the Chiefs' magical offense. So does head coach Andy Reid. But is it possible that Travis Kelsey, the team's best pass catcher, doesn't get the credit he truly deserves? Check out this play where he caught a pass and cleverly flips the ball to his teammate LaShawn McCoy, who scampers upfield for extra yardage. Not exactly how the play was drawn up, but I guess that's the benefit of having superstars deployed all over the gridiron. Throws back across his body. Oh, and a flip to McCoy from Kelsey. These guys ain't winning Super Bowls without all these gimmicks and gadgets. In the NFL, smartest and creativity reign supreme. And that's why the Patriots reign supreme for over a decade because they regularly found versatile weapons like the player responsible for this next moment. Super Bowl 51 marks the greatest comeback in NFL history. 
The Patriots were trailing 28-3 at halftime and came back to win the game. But one play in particular stands out as not only spectacular, but also brilliant. Down by eight points in the fourth quarter, Brady launched a ball down the field to his favorite target, Julian Edelman, in triple coverage. And despite being at a disadvantage, Julian Edelman never took his eyes off the ball and came up with a gravity-defying catch. Tom Brady himself called it one of the greatest catches he's ever seen in his life. Edelman comes down with a football and they're saying it's a catch. There you have it. Those were 200 IQ NFL moments. Brilliant. Am I right? If you liked this video, don't forget to give the thumbs up button a taparoo and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to check out more of our NFL videos, click on one of the pictures currently on your screen, because Dropkick has got you covered.